Good morning, my creative friends, and welcome. This is Dr. Manette Riordan, and this is Painting in Your PJs, where we gather to create, to think, to dive deep into all things life, love, and art. I love helping people at midlife reconnect to their creativity and see how authentic creative expression is the most important step to creating a life of meaning and fulfillment and to reconnecting to our purpose and sometimes even to our vocation. And I've been thinking a lot this morning, and I'll save that maybe for a different call to talk about the difference between vocation and professional work or career. And wishing you all a very, very happy holiday season. So in yesterday's spread, I showed you one of the ways I love to dive into my end of year reflection questions, looking at naming my emerging self. And yesterday I named her the traveler. And then as I sat with the page and I came down this morning, I realized that I needed a guide to travel into the journey ahead into the year that's coming. And I had already added this page. And so I realized she needed a traveler's guide to the journey ahead. And the most important aspect of that was to not travel alone, to remember this little word here says everyone's going. But some of the rules for her to travel ahead or to travel lightly, to wear a big smile, to not travel alone, to take compassionate action, which I'm going to talk a lot more about today, and to make time to rest, play, reflect, connect, and experience the journey. So these are my pillars of a radiant life that I've been talking a lot about over time. And so we're at the end of this end of year reflection journal. I'm pretty happy without how this came together throughout the month of December. It is a big chunk of a journal, which makes me so happy to go back and look through. And in fact, yesterday I was cleaning up my studio and boxing things up and realized how many journals I had created and worked in last year. It was quite a stack. So just a quick flip through of the journal. So the first question was, what was 2022 like for me? Topsy-turvy was kind of the word of choice. This page was all about celebrating, celebrating new directions, celebrating moving, celebrating new community, travel, lots of time in nature. This page is all I am statements about what did I learn that I want to bring forward with me? So there was a lot of just experiential deep diving into honoring all the learning, the experiences, the sorrows, the things that I want to let go of and the things that I want to honor and celebrate. This spread ended up just being pure, pure play. So I don't even remember what all the questions were now. I buried, as you can see, a lot of the text under, and I'm not looking at the list of questions. <clears throat> Good morning, Marion. This, I really ended up loving this uh, Dove page. This was all about what I want to explore and clarify as I reflect back and look forward. And so thinking about all the places that I've been, what, what do I want to explore next? And so as I'm looking through this reflections journal, what I noticed was this, the themes of peace, the themes of travel and movement, of love and grief and celebration, all these things kind of mingled together on this journey towards where I want to go in 2023. This is another page that's all about exploration. That one's not quite finished, so I'm going to spend some more time adding some marks to this page. I loved this was a winter solstice page, carrying the wisdom forward, stepping into the portal and into the light of what's coming. And then these pages were all about exploring symbols, guides, archetypes, and I was really struck by how these two pages come together, came together with these two words, living creativity. And that could be a guiding phrase for me this year, living creativity. I am living creativity. Creativity is alive everywhere and in us. So I feel like in this reflection journal, so much came together. 
this felt like a very affirmative page of being in the right lane. So this last year, I've questioned my path. I've questioned my own purpose. And so feeling like things are coming together quite clearly. And then yesterday, I created this archetypal image of the traveler because this is what I'm naming my emerging self as I emerge into 2023. And as I shared at the beginning of the video, the traveler's guide to the to the journey ahead with some some guidelines for how I want to travel. And so all this has led me to this place of deep inquiry over the, the last few days. And that little tab sticking up there is going to bug me, so I'm just going to take a minute to thinking about a word or a phrase of the year. And so I've done um, a lot of, you know, really sitting with my own deep reflection and deep experience. There's been a lot of that. And so sometimes when we're thinking about creating a word of the year, it's hard to know what the right word is. Are we going to choose correctly? What is the word that we want to create? And I've had a couple of words that I've been sitting with across time. Taking a sip of that hot coffee. And so a great way to start choosing your word of the year is to simply make a list of the words that you're thinking about. So simplicity, love, alignment, congruence. These are some of the words that I was thinking about this morning, and I was on a call with a spiritual group that I belong to, and a word came out of my mouth, and the, the facilitator of the group, you know, called that out as something to really sit with, and that word was discernment, discernment. So that one's been sitting with me a lot, ease, grace and ease. When I think about how do I, not only how do I want to feel, but how do I want to live? How do I want to practice? What's the energy of how I want to go forward this year? And I really wanted something this year that would cross over into areas of my life. So, you know, when I think about setting goals or intentions, staying focused on my health, on my relationships, on my just sort of daily life living, right? And then also on my work. And I'm fortunate to feel like my work is also my vocation or calling. And if you've never thought about that word vocation, I recommend um, doing a Google search for Parker Palmer vocation. Parker Palmer is an amazing teacher who I admire deeply, who does really beautiful work. And he talks a lot in his, in his book, A Hidden Wholeness, about this idea of vocation. Um, I think David White, one of my favorite poets, also talks about vocation. So I wanted something that would kind of pull all of these together, but a great way to start is just considering what area of your life needs attention or focus this year, and what are some of the ways that you want to feel, that you want to be in action, or how do you want to move is another way. So I'm, I'm in this sense of the, the traveler and wanting to create, how do I want to go forward from here? And so when I got up with my first cup of coffee earlier this morning, I spent some time online because the word that I was really sitting with was discernment. And I thought, you know, before I choose a word of the year, I'm going to go really make sure I understand what discernment means, which to me is all about making choices, right? And so to ma and making the choices that are right for, for me. So I went and looked at the definition. There's some very interesting Christian origins and spiritual meaning around this idea of discernment. Um, there's other spiritual concepts around discernment. And then there's just a, a more philosophical perspective on this idea of making the right choice, seeing the truth, being really brutally honest with ourselves, 
And that still felt very aligned. So I decided to go and look for some quotes about discernment. And I found some interesting quotes, but I found one by Joan Halifax that really struck me and helped me decide what my phrase for 2023 was going to be. And she says, compassionate action emerges from the sense of openness, connectedness, and discernment you have created. Compassionate action emerges from the sense of openness, connectedness, and discernment you have created. And the words compassionate action really struck me as a guiding force that would help me stay focused in all of these actions and that discernment is a path to that idea of compassionate action, compassionate action. And so one of the tools that I love to use a lot in my morning pages and my journals is mind mapping. And if you, I know Marion's here, we did some mind mapping in my Radiant Retreat. It's not too late to join me for the January 8th Radiant Retreat. There's a nice coupon code in the description above as well love for you to come and join me. So if you're not familiar with a mind map, it was actually created by, the concept was created by a guy named Tony Buzan. He has some great books. There's some beautiful examples out there on the internet. And it's a visual thinking tool to help us develop a concept. I've used it to write a couple of my books. I use it to plan programs. So there's a lot of ways, but sometimes it's a way to just sort of spark new ideas. And when I started to think about compassionate action in relationship with my six pillars of a radiant life, everything just sort of came together for me this morning. And so I could approach this mind map in a couple of different ways. So one arm might be, what does it mean to have compassionate action in health? And you can make this as colorful or as singular in color as you want. And if you're not sure what your word of the year is yet or your phrase of the year, you can also use this process to become clear. So you might just put a question mark in the center for the word of the year and then write the different areas of your life that you know you want to devote some time and attention to this year. And I'm going to put just living here because for me this includes, you know, travel, fun, play. And I've got work slash vocation here. And I can see what's missing on my list is friendships. And also my spiritual life. These are all areas that every year need my time and attention. Some years I am more focused on one than the other. But if I try to focus too much on one and not all of them, then I don't feel like I'm in congruence or in any kind of sense of balance. And I don't believe in balance in the, in the sense of a 50-50 equal balance, but that all these things need to get my attention. I spent way too much of my life deeply focused over here and neglecting some of these others. So I could also do this mind map through this lens of what does it mean to have compassionate action with deep rest, reflection, play, connection, work, and experience. But these also get integrated into everything that I'm doing. These are sort of my rules for traveling, right? My rules for traveling. And in fact, this may need to get just attached in here so that I remember, right? So that I remember. And so to develop a mind map, we start with these categories. And we start to think about what does it mean to take compassionate action in my health. So for me, that definitely means exercise. Um, I really thrive when I'm using intermittent fasting. 
Um, it means focusing on, um, I'm just going to put food for simplicity, which means, you know, cooking, meal prep, all the things that support and make this easy, right? So I still have not um, lost sight of the value of this word, that one of the things that I'm seeking going forward is more simplicity, is more simplicity. So this, again, is just a fun way to start to look at what's going to guide you going forward and why is it important to have a word of the year? And for me, it's important because it gives focus rather than setting a goal that um, is too big or too small or not being setting a goal that feels like a should you're not really committed to. This is more like a guiding principle, right? And when we have a guiding principle, it makes it easier to set goals and to stay committed to them. So here, this is travel, play, fun, adventure. So these are all things connected to how I want to live. And travel, we may get a chance to go to New Zealand this year. We want to travel to Nova Scotia and to Vancouver this year to see family. So mind maps, this is a very small page. I like doing these on very large sheets of paper and really having a lot of fun flowing them out. So relationships, that this is a lot about uh, love, connection, family, family, hubby. Okay, I can't write upside down. I should be turning my page around. Spirituality, what does compassionate action here mean to me? So um, this is time for reflection for ritual, and one of the things that is, I'm seeking here is consistency, right? My spiritual practice kind of comes and goes at times, so I'm seeking some of that consistency. So friendships, I am living in a new place, so I'm like, I need community in my life. Um, I need to make dates with friends. I need to reach out. I can get very hermit-like, happy, just me and my little computer here in my basement. And so it's important to have all of this be guided by this idea of compassionate action. So work needs to be about purpose. It needs to be intentional for me, intention. There needs to be clarity and plan, and nothing last minute. So I'm, I feel like I'm being guided by compassionate action, which is includes all of these things. All of these become these guiding principles. So compassion to me is all about kindness, absence of judgment, focus on love, and compassion is both an inward and an outer act, right? An inner and an outer act. So compassion towards self, if I start with action focused here, then that action can get turned out towards the world, but it has to start with compassionate action towards myself first and then towards others. And as I'm looking at this, I start to see things that aren't on here. So one of the, the goals that um, were intentions that I have for this year is to get involved in my local community, maybe find an organization to volunteer with. Um, I'm building a local chapter of a networking group. That's community is not on here. And so compassionate action is to me about finding the balance between being out in the future and being having enough solitude. Um, and in fact, solitude should go over here because it's something that's very important to me is solitude. So just by taking some time to simply build out a mind map in this way, we can start to really look at what matters and what's important and what's going to be this sort of guiding force. And that if this is the guiding force, asking myself, am I really committed? And I remember um, 
reading one of my favorite books of all time, The Big Leap by Gay Hendricks, The Big Leap by Gay Hendricks, and he talks about commitment and how to accomplish anything, we have to be 100% committed. If we're only 99% committed, we still have a back door open in the back of our mind and we forget, right? And or we slip out or we find loopholes in our commitment. And so I have to ask myself, am I committed to compassionate action? And if I say, yes, I'm committed, then I often have to say, how will I remember? So one of the reasons that people don't like to set goals anymore is because we set ourselves up for failure. We set grandiose goals that are too big. And within a couple of weeks, we've lost sight of those or we've you know fallen off whatever habit we've said that we wanted to attract. And I do have goals. I have goals for all of these different areas. But my path forward to those goals is commitment to compassionate action, not to the accomplishment of the goal, because the goals are going to take time. They're not going to happen in two weeks or a month or maybe even six months. They're going to take time. Some of these are ongoing and lifelong reflections, right? But so compassionate action is how I want to travel. So then I get to think about how do I want to represent that? How do I want to represent that? And right now I have no idea. So I think I'm just going to start building a page like I always do and see where I get to. And I kept thinking about, do I want to plant the seeds of that word of the year in this end of year journal or move to a new journal? And I think it's both and, right? I think that I'm going to do a page in here that's going to honor compassionate reflection because that's also or action interesting compassionate reflection so this has been a journey in some compassionate reflection over the last month and now it's time to take that reflection forward into action and when i think about my traveler archetype right like she can't it's it's the guide to how she's going to travel is with self compassion and with compassionate action and if you're joining me live this morning, good morning. We're talking about your 2023 word of the year. And I'm sharing a little bit about my process and how I have used everything we've done over the last month to create that word of the year and how I use mind maps to sort of guide how I'm going to choose that as well. And if you're here joining me live, please do say good morning. I love having you here. And if you've picked a word of the year, I would love to hear it. I would love to hear it. So I had some fun on Canva and found a poster in Canva. And I really loved these, this simple, simple background. Love the fun font. And I'm kind of digging these beautiful trees. It's very, the trees have been very snowy and beautiful here. So I'm kind of thinking about what is going to really speak to me about bringing these two words to life, compassionate action, and just staying curious about how can I be committed to compassionate action. Oh, expansive. Beautiful. I love that, Mary. And, and curious, what does that mean for you, or how do you see that showing up in your life going forward? All right. I'm going to put some paper under here. I think I'm going to put a little gesso on this page. I'm going to dive right in and think about compassionate action. Compassionate action. So one of the life lessons that I have been learning for many, many years, and we'll probably continue to work on and learn is to have greater self-compassion. I'm pretty good at non-judgment and feeling compassion towards others, still working on the judgment piece, but definitely thinking about how essential what Tara Brock calls radical self-acceptance, radical self-acceptance, no, I think it's Kristen Neff. Kristen Neff, who talks about radical self-acceptance and self-compassion, which simply means 
kindness and lack of judgment towards ourselves. And I think most of us are harder on ourselves than we are on most others around us, including our pets. I heard someone say that once and thought it was so appropriate. Beautiful. Thank you, Marian. I love that. More involved in the outside world after a couple of years of inner focus. Yeah, beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, so where do I want to go next? So this is always like staring at that blank page. I'm thinking about how can I, what feels like action? What feels like action? So action feels like movement. So how can I, and action also requires decision making, right? And this is where that piece of discernment where it felt like discernment was going to be the word, for a few weeks, I've been sitting with that and then finding this beautiful quote by Joan Halifax, which maybe is going to go on this page here. But compassionate action feels like movement, feels like travel. All right, I keep going for this teal color and I'm trying to get myself to think about what would be a different color. So when I think about travel, I love traveling to places where we get to be outside in nature. We're not big city people. It's not usually our, our first choice of where to go on a trip, although we enjoy cities when we're in them. So maybe I'm just going to play with some green on this page and think about connection to nature is definitely a compassionate action. The more that I am in nature, usually the happier, the, the calmer I am. So again, in that sense of just movement right movement and I did not gesso this page over here so I'm just sort of wiping off some of that extra paint loving this is a phthalo green which is kind of a, a bluey bluey green and bring some more of that in there <clears throat> but trusting yourself to connect to your intuition as your Starting a page and just getting some of the color on the page, right? Getting color on the page. This allows us to get over the fear of the blank page. And I'm feeling like this one maybe needs either a self portrait or some other kind of. Actually, I have in my collage box a, a figure of a hiker in a backpack. And so that kind of matches that theme of taking compassionate action, fitness, exercise, connection to nature. So the, the archetypal image of a hiker or a backpacker really makes sense for me when I start to think about this journey of compassionate action that I want to be taking. And compassionate action is, especially when we bring discernment into the conversation, is about making the right choices for us. It's just as much about saying no as it is about saying yes to things. And my husband and I have been sitting a lot with curious conversations and inquiry around comfort and our addiction to, to comfort. So compassionate action also means getting out of the, the comfort zone, whether that's like Marion said, of getting out into the world more, whether it's making different choices about Food, exercise, time spent watching television, you know, time spent saying an activity is going to happen and then not happening, right? So getting out of our own comfort zone 
is the only way forward, right? And this, our entire country is a, is a country of comfort. We've been taught that, you know, there's almost a sense of entitlement to this comfort. And we enjoy, many of us, not all of us, um, a life of ease. And we don't have the same capacity for dealing with discomfort that a lot of our ancestors did in the past when lives were much harder. We're not having to hunt for food, build our own houses, raise barns. So again, I'm just playing on the page here with this idea of movement. I have no idea where I'm going with this, just creating and building those layers. And so Brad and I are actually thinking about writing a book about the benefits of discomfort and how the more we're willing to step outside of our own comfort zone, the more progress we actually make towards goals, dreams, intentions, whatever you want to call them. Okay, so we have a pretty messy page. Love being in the messy middle. Actually kind of really just love the simplicity of these waves over here as well. And what I want to do, I cleaned up my whole studio yesterday. It felt so good. But of course, now I don't have everything right in front of me that I had before. I have lost my paper towels. What I really want is a book page. Let's see if I still have a book down here. <clears throat> there it is. An appropriate book for this conversation, uh, Walden's. Henry David Thoreau's book, Walden, which was a whole book about getting back to nature. And I have a couple of copies, so I've been using this one for collage materials. And I just want to blot up some of that dark indigo blue. See what happens when we just pull some of that away. Always ends up being sort of war shocky, right? Or just, um, and then I have this beautiful piece of collage paper to use for later. I like that so much that let's see if we just continue that a little bit. What else can we pull back? And I don't know why I'm getting these gorgeous white dots on here, like as if I had sprayed it with water. But I am, and there's just beautiful patterns on here from those scratch marks. I'm actually loving the collage paper just as, as much as the original painting I put down. <clears throat> Super fun. So those will get used in something else. And now I'm going to sit and think. So it's a very busy page. I know I'm going to bring that Joan Halifax quote over onto this page. I don't know if I'm going to hand write it or if I am going to print it out, but maybe I'm going to start by just writing that quote, giving this one a second to dry here. And so she said, compassionate, and I'm just writing this in pencil for the moment. Compassionate action emerges. From the sense of openness. connectedness and discernment <clears throat> you have created. So again, just continuing to dive deep into definitions and to pay attention to the, the meaning of things can take you on a really powerful journey into your word of the year, maybe into a different word that you hadn't even considered. 
which is what happened to me. I was looking for, oops, I can't spell, um, looking for Halifax, looking for quotes and definitions of discernment. And I came up with this, this beautiful quote. So compassionate action emerges from the sense of openness, connectedness, and discernment you have created. So in order for me to be in compassionate action, I have to be open, connected, and discerning. And I, I love that perspective. So I got the quote in there. Not sure what I'm going to do with that. kind of want to go grab my collage box and find that picture of that hiker. But I also kind of like these trees here and this line of trees. So I am going to just mess around here a little bit. And, you know, it's funny because so, so much of our journey through creating our own art and working in a visual journal is very much the same process of discernment, this process of discernment, of making choices the best choice for us in the moment without judgment. So it's not even about the right choice because there isn't necessarily a right choice. <clears throat> There's only the best choice for you in the moment. And Mary, and I'm curious if discernment was something that you thought about or worked with in your career at all. So I don't like the blue. I do like these white trees though. So I'm going to do a little fussy cutting. And I'm going to be okay with just a touch of that blue on there. There's something about this line of trees. It definitely speaks to me of Colorado and what I call home, what I'm so fortunate to be able to call home, to live in this beautiful place, and we're about a, I don't know, 45-minute drive, depending on traffic, up into the mountains to get up into Rocky Mountain National Park, which is one of my favorite places on this earth. All right. So that's looking a little bit better. I love where this is going with my word of the year. And now I get to decide, where am I going to go with this page? Do I want to bring some of that blue back? Do I want to bring some maybe those bigger trees back? I love the, the shapes of these trees. I bet. Thank you. I figure Divinity School is all about context and discernment, and that immersive experience never leaves you. And um, as someone who was raised Catholic and then has spent a number of years as a Unitarian Universalist, I feel like this is a, you know, there's a lot of history around discernment that in Catholicism, I wasn't even present to as a young adult and am present to in a much different way in my own faith traditions currently. So it's um, when I dipped into discernment this morning, I wasn't thinking about the, the spiritual context. And yet um, I'm glad that I did go that direction because I think it you know, when I think about my mind map and where I'm going and what I want to be focusing on for this year, if I want to stay in this sense of compassionate action, then that uh, process of discernment, openness, and connection are really going to be my sort of guiding lights this year. And I love having that sort of guiding light. And one of the things that I started doing a couple of years ago. So not only will I create a page in my journal to honor all these aspects of compassionate action, but I'll also do something um, 
pretty, maybe Zentangle inspired that I can hang up in my office where I can see it every day. Because if I can't see it, I forget, right? So often we create things in a journal and then we forget, right? Then we forget. And I don't want to forget this principle of compassionate action. So I will create a few different things around it, maybe even a fun little canvas. I got this quite wet now. Um, do, 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 do. Where'd my pretty green go? So I will create with it in a few different ways so that I remember. And I'm kind of thinking about maybe even I'm feeling like adding some more mountains and hills here. Creating a set of tags or index cards with some of these concepts that support compassionate action that I can flip through and use. And maybe I'll even work on that on the videos over the, the next couple of days or what are some of the other ways that I want to support and remember this idea of compassionate action. And again, I would not have had this, this clarity if I hadn't spent the time in a little bit deeper reflection over the last month. So just creating some hill-like shapes. This is ending up turning into a landscape, which is interesting. And I love that there's some natural light here as if the sun is beginning to rise over the hill. So you saw I started abstract and messy, and I just let this page guide me. I let the page guide me. There was nothing for me to do but to follow the page, to follow the page. And we live right on the edge of a beautiful line of hills. which are then flanked by the actual mountains. So I'm loving that I can still see some of the texture and designs and marks underneath, but that there's something a little more cohesive coming together here. And still thinking I'm probably going to go find that image of the hiker. Just cleaning off my brush as always. Get as much paint off that brush as possible so that I'm putting as little of that acrylic paint into the water system as possible. And now I need to decide do I want to bring that sun out? Loving where this is going, and I do think it needs just a little bit, a little pop of maybe some more transparent yellow. What's that? No, I want this nice Amster. I love this Amsterdam Azo Yellow Deep. It's a really beautiful yellow. And what if I just come in and get my fingers into this action here? And where we live, the sun sets over the mountains. In this particular in instance, the sun is rising over the mountains. And what I love about this in re relationship to compassionate action, every day is a new day. Every day is an opportunity to begin again. And I think the most important part of this as I'm on this journey, again, is this idea of commitment and how will I remember, right? How will I remember? How will I stay present to this journey? And one of the ways for me to stay present is to do this visual journal page first 
is a huge way of just embodying the learning and the teachings, but then also to really think about how else can I use visual creative tools to create something small that can sit on my de desk that will help me to remember, that will help me to remember as I'm going throughout the year. And I'm thinking about some of the, the words that I wrote over here, simplicity, alignment, congruence, ease, openness, connectedness, discernment, that um, I'm feeling that I'm going to create a little set of maybe just some index cards that I can keep on my desk that I will see sitting in front of me because I think it's essential to remember. And I love when a, when a page like this comes together and it's super, super simple. I'm going to go grab my box of collage supplies from the other side of the studio. That's what I get for cleaning up. Then nothing is in reach. But I'm pretty sure I know which of these boxes. And I'm very happy to have a clean, organized studio. And that also feels like a compassionate action this time of year is to declutter, to clean, to really focus in on letting go. I'm pretty sure I saw this image in here. And I had a big version and a small version. And it's in one of these two boxes. So this is part of that journey of creating, right? Is just pausing to take the time to find the right thing. And this is also why I love prepping images ahead of time. And I keep them, this box isn't super sorted, but generally I keep them sorted people, animals, and backgrounds. Okay, so that one's not the one, I don't think. Because then I usually remember them. I think about the, the images that I have. I also really love this guy on the horse who totally looks like a traveler. So let's pull him out. These were some I had pulled the other day that I hadn't used. Okay, I saw her yesterday. So one of my favorite things to do is to, you know, grab, okay, so there's the small version of her. So I have to decide, do I want the small version or the larger version? is to sit in front of the TV and pull images from books or magazines and to trim them up. And a couple of my favorites, Breathe magazine has beautiful images. It also means I get to buy magazines. I read them cover to cover and then uh, and then cut them up, recycle them, reuse them. They never go into the landfill. All right. I thought that one was in here, and maybe I was wrong, which means that maybe I'm going to use the small one, and that's what's meant to be in the moment. Anybody else really love decluttering and cleaning up this time of year? I'm starting to think also about creative goals for 2023. And I usually like to have something other than I just committed to making art, something that I'm focused on learning and I'm sort of toying with a couple of different ideas. Good morning, Blanca. Welcome, welcome. I would definitely recommend going back and watching. I did a whole thing on how I picked my phrase of the year, which is compassionate action, compassionate action. Okay, I am not finding that bigger image that I want. So let's play with what I've got here. 
We did some mind mapping and a little bit of writing and thoughtfulness around how do you arrive at your word of the year and how do you remember and stay committed to that? So I think she is just too tiny. I'm going to cut her away from her little crowns here. I think she's going to be too small. She looks really small relative to those words, and I want to really embrace and honor. So I love horses. I grew up with a horse. I always thought maybe I'd have another horse at some point, and that hasn't happened, and, and, and it won't happen. I you know, recognize that horses are also... A tremendous amount of work in my life has gone in different directions, but it was such an important part of my childhood, and I love the symbolism of the the horse as the as the traveler. And I'm kind of like in the drama of this black and white here against the colorful background. So as I'm thinking about how will I travel and how will I remember. And bringing in that figure there, and that's still not quite right. It's still not quite right. So again, this is that stage where we really take our time. This is the boring part of watching someone else doing collage. It's why oftentimes I'll try and pull some of the images ahead of time. And I know this image is here somewhere, and I may not waste your time finding that. I love this little dragon image. I love dragons, and it looks like she's tickling him. And I don't know about you, but I never liked being tickled. So many fun images in here. All right, these are all these. Hmm. And this is actually a beautiful image as well, thinking about compassionate action or, or spiritual discernment of sitting in that quiet and deep reflection. There it is. Kind of like this traveler as well. All right, I had my instincts were right the first time about where this woman with her backpack is. And I think this one needs to go as part of this story, needs to go as part of this story. Okay, and lost my scissors. So I love the mountains in this picture as well. I will save them for something else. But there's something about this traveler with her backpack and her walking stick and she's looking off into the distance that really continues to convey that sense of forward motion and compassionate action maybe she's gonna be up here walking in the mountains and so it's creating just this really simple page. It took a while to get there, but a way of honoring where I started the journey yesterday with the archetype of the traveler, right? And how the traveler, her guide to how she's going to journey. And the biggest piece of that is going to be with compassionate action, traveling with compassionate action. And I love how these pages always seem to come together in about an hour, right? In about an hour. And I know we don't always have an hour to create. It can seem like a really long time. And some days all I would do would be to do that first layer of the background. And then I would walk away and let that dry. And then the next day I would come and add another layer. So never feeling like you have to complete a spread in one sitting but to really take your time and just enjoy the process of putting a little bit of color 
on the on the page. Okay, I think I'm just going to come in with some glue stick and get these images down on the page. And again, this feels like it's just my first and not my only representation of compassionate action. Compassionate action. And I love having one phrase that's really going to guide me in all aspects of my life and work this year. That it doesn't need to be separate, right? Doesn't need to be separate. One of my friends was posting a comment about having, you know, a word or phrase of the year just for her business. And for me, it feels like it's all the same. My life and my work are the same. And how I do one thing is how I do anything. How I do one thing is how I do anything. And so I want to step in to and stay in the space and energy in 2023 of compassionate action. And that feels like an inspired and inspiring way to move forward into the year. So it is Tuesday, December 27th, and over the next few days, my plan is to continue to work with, before we switch to the new year and to January, some of these words and concepts that I've been writing about and journaling about, and to create a set of index cards of action and things that will support this concept of compassionate action that I can put on my desk and remember throughout the year. So that, that's what I'll be working on over the next couple of days. Until then, have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thanks for joining me live. Thanks for joining me for the replay. This is Dr. Manette Riordan, painting in your PJs with Manette, and I look forward to seeing you back here again tomorrow. Have a great day. I'll see you soon.